Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Strategic Command World War One, episode number June nineteenth. <laughs> Did destroy a lot of units this turn, and boy, we took a lot of towns. So that is looking very good. We also have uh, this unit to deploy. I do like to deploy these typically at the end of the turn, but no, there's even something to be said about just deploying it right away, since we kind of know we kind of know what we want to do. Um, we probably want to put it on the Italian border, and I don't know how the best way of doing this. Um, so Trento is a bit vulnerable. I can rotate this troop in, and maybe I should, because um, if they bring the full brunt of their force against Trento, they might be able to destroy that attachment. It's not likely, I would say, but it's possible if they get some good initial rolls and then subsequent rolls are even snowballs, right? If they have a good first round, then this is a weaker unit. It doesn't fight as well against subsequent units. So anyway, just thinking about where to put this unit. Probably don't need it anywhere near Serbia. Things are looking pretty good over there. Um, yeah, I mean, I was just taking a look at the map before starting to record this and I'm really pleasantly surprised how well things are going so far. Unfortunately, I still haven't figured out how to use seaplane carriers. This thing has a strike available, but even if I move it close, it doesn't seem to be able to use that strike. Or I guess its strike can only be used against... Hey. Okay, its strike has been used, although nothing happens. So maybe it has some strategic value, or you know what? Maybe you get some more... I bet you... I bet you, I'm almost positive, suddenly it's all come become clear to me that... Naval Warfare... I don't know. The British probably have something researched here that I don't. Naval Warfare is at once, so maybe that's not it, but maybe one, some of these other ones. Naval Weaponry? Yeah, carrier attack. So probably it's one of those where, you know, you get better as... Yeah, so this is kind of a useless unit, just scouts. Uh, we still have an ability, a very strong ability, to take out this destroyer. Now, my idea is always try to use the unit which is farthest away. This might be... Well, should we try to get a submarine? No, the submarine's... Okay, we have this... Oh, that's already been used. But let's move this dreadnought up here. Okay, one to five. Ooh, two points for a six on the destroyer. That was unacceptable. Frankly, unacceptable. Move this guy down so this guy can move there. And I guess we'll just leave this guy here. Who's our next? I guess the next contender is not. Oh, this guy is close enough to move. Is it worth doing? I think our destroyers are better off not being done with that. So the next one is this battleship can have a go at it. And he gets the job done nicely. Okay, we'll move him back here. That's a nice little defensive point. He covers Bristol's port very nicely from this location. I don't know if there's anything over there. Okay, maybe next time I should have used the carrier for that. I don't know, is this carrier even more? Ah, it's free points. Shouldn't do it. Probably just want to... Okay... Ouch. Okay, let's move this guy back away. Um, this submarine is down to three supplies, so we want to get him just to any friendly port. Could even be Brest. Now, Brest, unfortunately, because it's at a supply of three, cannot repair this submarine. We can get him back up to supply of ten, but if we want to repair this guy, we're going to need to find a better port. And, luckily, luckily for us, one is available here. In fact, this guy can actually make it all the way over here. And this guy can make it all the way over here. So we'll probably start pushing these guys as far as possible. So that new guys, when they're coming... Um, don't have to go as far. Which is nice. So, like, this submarine... Can't make it anywhere substantial yet. But it will... Actually, yeah, it's your strength. I feel like the submarines are worth replenishing the supply of... So, so we have two dreadnoughts that haven't moved, and we know that there's a light carrier up here. What I would like to do, even though this guy has a supply of five, I kind of want to scout with our 
Submarine first. Okay, there it is. I think that was really worth it. And this guy can even remarkably end on a national morale objective. So we still don't know if there's anything in between this and the light carrier. I would like, if I could, to be the aggressive action. I think it's worth doing to sink their light carrier, which has just been a pain in the butt. And we got through. Perfect. Oh. If you look at that, we didn't actually kill it. Can you get to it? Oh, you can. Oh, yes. Ah, we took damage. Damn it. Well, we definitely want to move this guy down. I think I'll move this guy. They're not raiding, so move him here. Yeah, I guess I'll just, just occupy this area. <laughs> We've got dreadnoughts in the freaking <laughs> Irish Channel. And the North Channel, I guess it's called. Irish Sea. This is just crazy. I think, I imagine they have a something in the Glasgow Harbor as well. Nothing in the Dublin one, though. We've run by that. You need to get home now, because you're low. But you're okay. You could probably use a quick, quick filler up at supply of six. Let's just do that since you're in range. Um, nine, eight, six. Actually, you're. Well, we'll get you back next turn. So we'll we'll definitely be trying to use our dreadnoughts to good effect, and I think that that's a good start. They can come down. Okay, I actually want my just my submarine here. I know that it means that this line will not be blockaded this turn. I'm gonna be just okay with that. In fact, supply of eight, supply of eight. I'm gonna get this guy to raid. Because he will raid this line. It'll knock his supply down to 7. But he's not likely to be attacked. Or it won't matter as much. This submarine is likely to be... Well, he's going to be a blocking force for what I imagine is... Some angry British Royal Navy ships steaming south to... Counterattack my dreadnoughts. And honestly, this wouldn't be a bad time for me. Can I deploy mines? No, I, I don't know. I think you have to have a certain amount of movement left, so we don't want to do that yet. Uh, okay. All right, well, anyways, that was a fun little excursion for a little bit. Okay, and we actually, I need to go over to the Baltic because... I don't remember where he was. Here? There he is. Okay, we didn't end up getting the kill here, but just move back so they don't know where I am. So if he moves at all, hopefully we get to do damage to him. Get you into port. There's a port open here. We'll probably end up repairing these guys, but we'll do that at the very end, the repair stage. Okay, so, so far, what's going on with the Navy. We do have units that haven't moved. You're able to go... Uh, we'll get you to this objective, I think. Why not? Just do as much damage as possible. That's what they're doing to me. Oh, we have this submarine, who's a 10-10. Okay. Okay, well, these four are nicely intact. Nope, oh, nope, nope. All right, so we found where they are. Um, let's back off. So they have a light cruiser here. That's not too bad. I don't know, this is interesting. I could get this dreadnought to go east and fight the Russian one. Don't really feel like doing that, though. <laughs> okay, you can come out and play as well. I don't know, I'll have to go, I'll put a pause at some point. Look at that, oh, okay, we have this as well. 
Do damage. No. And then I think if we go here... Oh, they're not there. Oh, you're... What? What's your mode? Why is your... Why are you red? Well, we'll move this guy back. We'll just stay on the line, I guess. I don't know what this red's all about. I think that's like, um... What's it called? Oh, that's some um, sleep mode. Or, yeah, silent mode, I should say. But I don't actually want him in silent mode. He probably dove in the last turn or something. I don't know. Alright, so, you know, the more interesting thing, I think the Navy is really not that interesting. It's just like a puzzle game. It's just, I mean, okay. All this can be kind of just used as an analogy for a puzzle, but I just don't find the Navy, naval combat that compelling, so. Ah, what do we have left? Okay, so we have some stuff to do with Bulgaria as well, because their units didn't really move. I feel like we should just have one of their cores sit in Adrianople. Uh, just in case, this is another just in case of uh, invasion, and probably... I think we'll eventually even get these guys to replace the Ottoman forces here. Um, so that the Ottoman forces can shift. So you know what? I think that's what we'll end up doing. And then we'll just start operating these units away. So we'll wait one more turn. Oh, actually we can swap. Perfect. So you can operate. Wow, okay. How much does it cost? 22. Let's say yes and see where we can get. First we can get is here or... Or we can get all the way down here. I'm not going to choose to do anything yet. Let's make sure that this guy gets into Medina. I always forget. Yeah, I'm going to have ADD on this turn. If I'm, if I'm not very careful, it would be easy to just keep playing. Like, whatever I'm looking at, I might get distracted by. Okay, going back. I think Serbia falls next turn, so I don't think that this is important. Um, we do want to remember that Pristina... Okay, nobody can get to Pristina, but Pristina is a possible... Partisan spawn point. Sophia's capital is. I wonder why we can't get in. Oh yeah, we can't. So you can get in though, although you'll lose your ten. Okay, let, let's see this. It's going to be a four. A four, I think, uh, is boosted to a seven. That's really not that good. Well, let's just roll the dice that no partisan spawns, and then we'll have a detachment ready to go for next turn. Okay. Cannot... Oh, you know what? A one-to-one... -one... I, th I know I've mentioned this before, that this unit might just dissolve when they surrender. I'm going to go ahead and take a one-to-one, -one, though. It's just such a good ratio for a detachment to get one-to-one -one against a core. And I'm pretty skeptical that they'll be able to reinforce. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Might have been a waste, but if it's not... I, I feel like the risk-reward ratio is favorable for doing the attack. Okay, I know what we need to do. We need to go up to Russia. Because there's a lot of stuff to do up here. A lot of exciting things to do. So, um, we'll do this attack. Okay, and I think... Okay, you are going to move here. This 10 is going to move here. Oh. Oh yeah, he can't do the attack first. He just has to go. Very unfortunate. This one can do the attack. Please don't take a hit. Please don't take a hit. Thank you. So he can get there. And my HP can get in here. This 9 can still... So I'm trying to figure out what to do. Can this 9... Well, this 9 can't really do anything. It's already attacked. I guess it just goes and holds the line. That makes sense. Curse can do a 1 to 3 attack. That's actually great. We can probably really pummel on this guy this turn. 
Two to one, but we can do this attack first. Is it worth it? His entrenchment is three. I mean, we're we get to the point where we really do need our artillery to become better so that would, these attacks are not so not so painful. Anyway, so we've we've done what we wanted to do on this side, and now I should say we've done it. The next thing we need to do is complete the encirclement from the other side. And one of the things I okay, so I definitely want I remember this as a weaker unit. Let's go ahead and take him, move back. This is kind of a holding nothing area. Honestly, or not even honestly, but obviously, Konigsberg is extremely important and we can't lose it. So that's what these guys are doing is they're essentially there it's a picket line to prevent any of the Russian units from pushing all the way to Konigsberg. Now they can't get there in one turn. So one, two, three, four. The closest they can get is here. However, so if they get here, then one, two, we attack. One, two, we attack. So the closest they get, unless one, two, three, four, I think they could actually go in here, which would be bad. <laughs> um, I think one, two, three, four. Yeah, I think I think they can go in there. I'm trying to, to figure out if it's worth to move this unit to Johannesburg so that the Johannesburg unit can move out. So to me, it's pretty clear what we're going to do. We're going to move here and here. And then this unit is going to move here and here. And now we just need this unit to move here, this unit to move here, and the encirclement is now done. We have a solid line, completely solid line, encircling these units, unless they want to try to break out over here, but this is the Pripyat march marshes. I suspect that they don't have any forces over here. I mean, it doesn't make sense that they would have units just basically in zero supply. <laughs> So I feel like that this HQ is pretty well protected. It basically the flank is protected by the the low supply of the of the marshes, which should prevent forces from trying to navigate that. Um, we might want to shift this unit a little bit further. That doesn't seem like a great choice. So one of the problems right now is that Siedlitz has has a supply of eight, and Lublin has a supply of seven in the south. These are going to keep these guys relatively well supplied. So what I want to do is make sure that those are the first places that we attack. Um, one, it'll reduce supply even if we don't take it. But two, if we do take it, uh, the rest of these places are going to be kind of SOL on, on, on supply because Warsaw is only out of one. It's only going to go up by one tick a turn, which means even in three more turns, it'll only be at four. And four is still low enough that if you're at four, you will, um, it's possible that you'll just be outright destroyed. So yeah, that's the whole goal of this whole encirclement, besides just eliminating a lot of Russian forces, leaving no place for them to run, hopefully is to get them to really low supply. Now, all that said, we might need to get this uh, artillery over to Siedlitz as a means of... See, if we can't just leave it exposed there, though. This is where we would have to have the infantry shifted south. Now, I do have a, a few spare forces here on the western front. I believe we're going to end up... Yeah, both of these guys will probably end up being reinforced. that it? That's the only guy? Okay, the only ones who can be reinforced are these three? Yeah, looks that way. This poor five, I hope he survives, but... Yeah, he has a bit of morale. It's possible. If we're lucky, they'll just move in to defend Vichy. Hey, if we're even more lucky, they won't even defend Vichy. <laughs> that would have been great. It would have been so cool if we could have gotten into Vichy. Why, why couldn't we do that? I don't remember. Oh, I think it wouldn't allow me to get to that, but I was able to because of zone of control. We had already seen this, so this was zone would have been zone of control, but we would have had it here. In order to get into here, we would have needed two extra movement points. And from here to go here, I guess, is it a river crossing increases it? Eh, it's the little details that I still don't know. All right, let's not bog down. It's easy. Very easy to get bogged down. Talking off. 
completely uh, tangential, unrelated topic. All right, I'm going to pause and think about that one. Come back. What do we want to do in the south? I think we end up doing this attack just because it is favorable and we're going to be able to get an even better ratio out of it. They're at 57, 63. Okay, 57, 60. So dropped it by two and one. And now we can do some bombardment. We have two shells, 55, 60. 54, 57 really didn't do that much. 52, 54, and they're out of shells. So, up oh, it did. We're up to a one to four. Now that's, um, I don't think that jump, we shouldn't read into it too much. It's, it's a continuous scale. We're seeing an integer jump, but I think that the battle values are all, you know, we didn't go up by, our chances of winning this or defeating this guy didn't go up by 33% just because of those two bombardments. I think that it might've been like, like 3.7 or 3.4 if they're not rounding and it went up to 3.5, something like that. Still, 1 to 4 is absolutely worth taking. And it was 1 to 4. This is going to be a 1 to 3 now. This is perfect. And we swap places. He does have a lot of supply, but we will at least kick him out of here. Which is good enough for me. And this guy can move forward. Do we want to do that? I don't think so. Can we undo? No, can't undo. The reason why I did that is because I knew I could move back. Just take the land and then move back to Nalutz. I think I'm going to do that. just don't really want this territory. This guy's back in Lutz with his entrenchment. Very nice. Ravno is a 8. That's pretty good supply. Now, we have Lemberg here, which has given us all the supply we need right now, but... Doesn't look like the Russians are hurting either. Proskurov is an eight. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. It's it's really interesting. The Russian front is very interesting. Oh, by the way, I forgot to announce. I have very exciting news. I'm going to be starting an Entente series, but even more exciting than that, that series is going to be play by email multiplayer. Or the play by email plus plus the system that Matrix uses. And that my um that series, my opponent will be Agrippa Maxenius. So that's going to be a really interesting one, I think. Um, it's going to be wonderful to have a human opponent. Uh, so much us uh, in this. And this is a really terrible situation. I was looking at this off camera in vain. I cannot figure out a way to get this HQ back far enough not to be a, either, I mean, we can leave him in van and he'll take huge casualties, probably retreat. It's possible. It's very likely he'll retreat anyway. Take casualties and then still retreat. So, if we move here... Oh, 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 perfect. We can have our cake and eat it too. Okay, that's not bad. That's uh, better than I expected. I had no idea I could do that, but that's wonderful. Now, if we wanted to, we can try to discourage this guy from attacking. Um, he only has ground cover. He has low morale. He's in low supply. So if we get lucky, we can just start throwing tons of units at him and see what sticks. Unfortunately, if any one of these units which gets here and attacks, it will also be stuck in a Lesker. So, I think it's worth doing. I know this is bizarre, but I'm going to do a very bad attack. And it's an 0-3, and you're like, why did you do that? You're crazy. Well, I think it helped lower their morale. And probably this is my best chance. 80% morale. Yeah. So, we'll try to go for this. Oh my god, that's so brutal. It didn't help at all. Okay, but it ended up being a 2-1, to one, which I'll take in order to weaken him a little bit. We'll move in somebody to keep protecting our primary supply source here. Yeah, I'll move this 10 in, and then what we can do is just have this cavalry heal. I won't do that quite yet, because we don't really know what else we might need. 
Um, this unit can keep coming. It looks like we want him to head south for Van on the other side, on this path. So I'm going to do that. We still have that other unit we can operate. Oh yeah, we have this mess, which is maybe, wow. Ouch. Uh, easy enough to deal with. Okay, now we have this. Well, he's at three supply. Okay, yeah, so it is worth it. If we can kill him, he's gone forever. Well, one to two is a terrible start. Darn it. Should we go for it? The thing is, if we attack, we can't reinforce. One to two. Why is it a one to two? Yeah, it ended up being a one to two. Damn it. Ouch! Ouch! Well, that was not the way I expected that to go, but we will end up reinforcing this unit because that's mandatory, just purely mandatory. So that was a very bad exchange. Um, shoot. Oh well, uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Just got a little bit unlucky, I feel. And we're not gonna do anything over here. This front looks like we're finished as well. Basically, we want people digging in. This guy's the main one we want dug in. He's got entrenchment of one, so... If this guy moves over here, the problem is... Yeah, we'll, what we'll do is we will move this unit over to cut off their retreat. Um, we'll isolate them in van, which only has a four supply, and that's not its maximum, though. Its maximum is probably six then, or maybe five. Maybe five? So we'll just attack him, wait for Van to drop below five. Once it gets to a four, we can kill this unit um, without... Yeah. Without it being sent to the cheap recovery supply pool, or, you know, unit purchase pool. Alright. This is this destroyer is another big one to me. It's really important. Okay, 143... It's like the only unit I want fixed from the naval side. We'll leave the rest. And actually, I think we've actually... It's not a very good turn. I'm extremely tired, sorry. Um, 45 points. Or we can buy another one. So we haven't lost any yet, which means these are not cheap. So because of that, I think, oh yeah, we have this guy still. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, I think we will just repair this cavalry for 45. And this guy for, oh crap, 22. Oh, that's supply limited. You know what I messed up there? We should have swapped these two guys. So, so, but that's okay. You know, live and learn. If I had swapped these two, this guy could have gotten repaired back to 10. And this 10 would have been here to face the brunt of these attacks. Okay. Alright, well, that could have gone better. This whole turn could have gotten better. I'll have to pause here and see if there's anything else I need to do. I think we're probably done. Disappointing over here. I just, we can't really go that deep here. We need more cores or an HQ or something, and we definitely cannot afford an HQ. This is one thing I want to make sure I do, is make sure we are sending all the supply. 10%, yep. 10%, good. Just want to make, make sure. Okay, so let me pause and then come back in when I see if there's anything I'm missing. I mean, I guess I didn't see anything down here. One to two, one to two. That should be a little bit better than one to two if one of them succeeds. Although, I don't know. I'll, I'll come back. Okay, that didn't work. A pause button, pause. Okay, uh, it turns out that I'm in my wrong recording mode. This is my stream mode, so I have no pause. <laughs> anyway, it's fine. 
gonna make a few adjustments here. We're gonna move this guy up to the time pole. Um, we are, we have a lot of things, a lot of little, minor little things to do. A lot of repairing to do. So we have some points up for the Ottomans. Um, I think it's time to operate this unit. I just wanna look at the places we can go again. The best option for us is either to go here to send them off to the Russian front. Seems like, I, I, I feel like we do have a lot of units over there, but it also still seems like a strong idea. Or we can move them down here, which is to help us to push the British out of the Sinai, basically. We could try to move them all the way over here. And for that, I think the best choice is either, oh, it's either right here, which might be it, or it's right here. I'm taking this long path all the way around. Probably it's better to go faster go here, but maybe it's more effective to attack from a different side. That's not gonna be what we do because we can't really do anything over there without an HQ to help with supply. Supply is just abysmal. So that really only leaves these two. And I feel like kicking the British out in this area is maybe slightly more important. Also, there's really limited frontage over here. Is one more infantry unit going to be necessary? I mean, these are tough decisions. I think I want to put them here for now. So... Maybe we move this guy south. I mean, might as well just put him in the port here and then get this unit to operate right to the front. Okay, we'll go, we'll just do this. Good. I'm pretty happy with that. Is there anything else we want to do over here? I don't think so. Things are looking good. There's definitely more we can do. Oh yeah, before I forget, the naval stuff. Yeah. So I want to try to get everyone onto a national morale objective. I think I'll put my... Carrier here, destroyer here. So they're on national morale objectives. This destroyer can come in and just sit here for now, which is also a national morale objective. You guessed it. Okay, so that was the naval side of things. We also have repairs to do. Now, as the Germans, really feel like we have carte blanche, we can just do whatever the heck we want. We can repair any ship, anything. Not so with the Austro-Hungarians, because there are some research stuff that we want to get done. We should be buying detachments, stuff like that, to hold the line. We do have that new unit still, so let me go ahead and just invest in the light cruiser. I may, okay, so let's see. We have, we still have a substantial amount remaining and no discounts. What, what kind of discounts do the Austro-Hungarians get right now? They can get one core. I think that's worth purchasing. It's gonna be very nice to have a core back and we have some cavalry. We have two cavalry. Okay, well let's get one of our cores back. Let's purchase this one. And we'll try to use the rest on research. Okay, yeah, and this guy's here. So this, again, I was thinking about putting him on one of the sides of Trento, but the supply at these places is five. It's pretty bad. So until we get a headquarters over here, again, these, it's another one of those situations where I don't think the low supply is worth it. So we'll put them here just to make sure that we're projecting our zone of controls. I put them in the wrong spot. I meant to put them here. <laughs> Stupid. That's fine. I don't think it'll matter. The only reason it would matter is if they went here and then here, but there's no way they're gonna be able to do that. So that's fine. <laughs> Um, and I think after all my thinking, I will sw swap these two. We'll reinforce that guy. He has entrenchment of one. He has also, you know, reasonable morale. I think he's going to be able to hold. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And everything else here is fine. I think we're fine here. Oh, yeah. I did that HQ. I might need to put another, oh yeah, I, I, that's right. It's time to actually repair some, th some things. Get this guy, this guy. Again, with the Germans, it's, it's a little bit easier to just throw away points pretty quickly. We'll get the battle cruiser. 
These are all fresh in. They'll need repairs next turn. Um, I still feel like I'm missing some of the stuff. Probably the research side of things. Okay, so Austro-Hungary. Uh, <laughs> what the heck? Austria-Hungary. Austro-Hungarian? -Hungar I don't know what I was trying to say there. I, it's very late. <laughs> I'm just trying to get this out before I have to go to sleep. So you can see it on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Austro-Hungarians, we could always add more to points to trench warfare. It's a very important one. Having the 120, just being high enough. Oh, maybe industrial tech. That might start to become more important. Otherwise, we can put, I mean, command and control is just so important. I think that that's probably the one we got to do first. So they really need the command and control side of things to improve. Um, so no research for the Ottomans. We're done with the Austro-Hungarians. Last, but certainly not least, in fact, probably the least of the least, <laughs> the greatest, is the Germans. What do we want to do for research with these guys? Well, they actually have a lot of points remaining. Um, wait for production tech to tick over before we do any production. Might as well, we already invested in it, right? But we can add another point in industrial, which seems like a solid investment. We'll keep that maxed. That will take us to five, so we'll probably leave it there indefinitely. We're actually pretty close, only 200 points away from our maximum. What I think it might be worth doing is taking another 200 points and throwing it into infantry warfare, which will just give us even higher unit morale. Either that or we could, you know, just do some experimental stuff or we could try to get more artillery or something. But I feel like we should wait for production to drop first before uh, we buy anything, even though it's pretty pathetic rate of return. Naval warfare? Well, we only, we only have one more tick in that. It would take a long time to get through it, unfortunately. Although that might be a nice kind of a way to counter the um, American entrance, which they probably will enter eventually. Infantry warfare, I mean, just I'm not sure it's even necessary. We're doing so well so far. Oh my gosh, just like I'm bogging down all over the place. Quickly, I'm gonna do the. Uh, I think I'll do the battleship. I'm actually surprised that we. Oh, yeah, we do. Have, okay, that's right, that's right. Okay, I remember what I wanted to do now. I knew I was missing something. We're gonna do these reinforcements, but we have two tens here, which are free to deploy. I'm gonna take the lower one, the Guards Reserve Corps. These guys are gonna operate. Before they do, we're gonna move. They're going to operate over to Johannesburg, so we can move this guy all the way down. I think I'll move him here, have him entrench to block. Yeah, probably block this way. And now we can operate one of our cores. Again, we I don't think we need this many. So we'll start shifting people to the eastern front. We never did the early shift to the eastern front, which, um, which Von Mulka did in the opening... Uh, opening weeks of the war he took some uh, i think two cores three cores maybe it was two cores off of the french front and deployed them over to russia they didn't even arrive until after the disaster for the russians at tannenberg so they really weren't necessary in the end and you know we can always armchair quarterback i'm sure many of you are doing that to me um armchair armchair general or whatever you want to call it you know uh, backseat drive <laughs> Second guess, uh, hindsight 2020, all these things. We could do that even to you know people historically, not just people playing video games. And it's probably the most likely place, it's the most common place it's done. So still 340, I just have so many points. We can't invest that many. I, okay, let's just do the infantry warfare. I feel like it's, you can't go wrong with that. And because my brain's not really functioning well right now, I want to take some of the safer choices <laughs> so I don't regret things after I save and, you know, quit and this turn goes out. All right, battleships. 70 points. It's just, it's just too many. It's just too many. I refuse. I don't know what we can get as far as research goes. We can't. We have 15 points of research available. Yep. So, we can purchase, but we ought to wait one turn. Okay, fine, 
Fine, you stupid ding-dongs. I'll do it. Pretty expensive, but... Ah, good. We still have some people who can benefit from points. Oh god, we actually messed up. We repaired those battleships when we should have been repairing these guys. You'll move here, you'll move in here, and I think that's all we want to do for this turn. So, we've managed to still take it over 40 minutes. This, of all the videos, this definitely did not need to be 40 minutes. I was expecting it to be 30, but... That's really mostly just because I'm trying to do this on half a brain cell. Okay, that's going to conclude it. I guess the next turn we start off with the opening... You know, um, simulating the turn, ending the turn, and seeing what happens. Uh, and we'll figure out what other things I need to correct then. So for now, thanks for watching, and until the next one. Oh yeah, and once again, a group of Maxenius series. Let me know what you think about that. Because um, I'm trying to play the Entente for that one. But you know, nothing's set in stone yet. We can always change things. Um, I think it'll be a good series. But uh, if I know that probably there's some people who are ho who... I uh, would have been hoping I would play against THG. And, you know, maybe that'll happen one day as well. But, yep, yeah, okay, for now, thanks for watching, and take care.